Yeah, good morning. It's, uh, it's a pleasure to have you in this uh, political rumbles. It's been a while. Yeah. How are you getting on with uh, life and uh, all that? I'm good, my brother. It's a, it's a pleasure to be together with you once again. I thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, well, with the recent uh, uh, kidnapping uh, syndrome across the Nigerian state, of recent is the kidnapping of the three Reverend Sisters, and the IPOB have vowed to go after the kidnappers. Uh, does it appear that the Nigerian military uh, architecture will no longer uh, guarantee the safety and life of the support citizens? Thank you very much. Um, it's a happy thing that uh, the kidnapped reverence is a great opportunity to their freedom. Uh, we thank God for that because uh, they have been through uh, what I may become as a lion's den before they have the life. It's something we're celebrating. Because when you are exposed to a situation whereby your life is under threat, you will know that life uh, is sweet. So we are thankful to God that the Reverend uh, Sisters will gain their freedom. That's one. And then secondly, of course, as you can say in the fact that uh, uh, security architecture has broken down in the country. And so people are at liberty to pick up people at will. Is fast degenerating into uh, what is called uh, uh, the provincial state of affairs, where uh, might is, is power, and uh, anybody can pass uh, uh, on anybody if you feel stronger than the person. Nothing is stopping you. So uh, it's unfortunate that uh, the law enforcement and uh, the security architecture is completely absent anymore. So we don't know who has kidnapped them, and uh, anybody can kidnap anybody right now in the system that we have. It's uh, one of the symptoms of a failed state. There is no law and order and no enforcement of anything. And so the IPOB, IPOB, if, you, if they say they know those who have kidnapped them and they go after them, fine. Um, that is it. But we pray, we, 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 we lament the situation where we have found ourselves. So, um, it's unfortunate. Nigeria um, has become uh, a free state. Uh, I mean, we can do it. We are not uh, exaggerating the situation when we say that the nation has, has uh, the state is falling. So uh, we are praying that there could be uh, uh, there could be an uh, 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 we, that we could uh, uh, get to a situation whereby we can begin to build our nation from scratch from the ground level up. Yeah, could that be possible with the same system? How do you see it? the possibility of rejecting the system? I mean, charting the way forward without uh, a deliberate and intentional, of course, move to address, of course, mirrors of problem of, of course, bordering on uh, existence as a people. Yes, um, it, it is said that you don't solve a problem with the same mindset with which you created the problem. You have to step out and beyond where you were, where you modeled yourself into uh, uh, that tangle of a problem. What am I trying to say? We cannot solve the problem without, first of all, curing ourselves of the mindset that got us into that problem. So there has to be a paradigm shift. There has to be a, 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 an existential overhaul of who we are. We have to step out and do something differently. We can't claim to want to solve this problem by continuing with everything that we have been doing wrong. How do you mean by, by a paradigm shift? Paradigm shift in the sense of there, there should be a, 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 a 
really national reorientation, a really national rejig of our system, a new understanding. Okay, we have to get into ourselves and begin something new. We have to change things. Okay, we have been going at this for a long time, and look at where it has gotten us. What am I trying to say? First and foremost, we, the, 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 the citizens of this nation, the leaders and everybody involved, we have to begin to prize what is called social justice. We have to begin to include social justice in our system. There has to be justice in, in the system, okay? It is said that you don't only do justice, but justice has to be seen to be done. People have to feel that they are getting justice out of the system. You cannot be killing things on people when people feel hurt, if they feel wrong, if they feel unjustly treated, they are going to want to revenge and get back at the system one way or the other. Who are the terrorists that we're having? Who are the who are the kidnappers? Who are the people turning the system around? Most of the people, who are the aberrants that we have, the armed robbers, most of them are the people that the nation has failed or refused to educate mm. when they were in part of, part of their lives and needed to be educated. They were not educated, so some of them are getting back at you. Do you understand me? Yes. So that is the way it is. If the so-called elite refuse to educate the children of Nigeria because they are not their children and they're educating their children, sooner or later, those people that you refuse to educate will make it impossible for your own children that you're educating to enjoy the system. I think uh, the government's, uh, federal government is not learning lesson either. And uh, uh, point to the fact that uh, the sustained uh, ASU strike, of course, have lingered more than necessary. Uh, this involves uh, undergraduates, which are predominantly Nigerian uh, children, Nigerian youths. And the government is uh, paying lip service uh, to make sure that the people, the, these children, undergraduates, return to the classes to complete their their academic uh, pursuits. Could that portend a more greater problem than we, of course, foresee? Of course, it will. Of course, you will. It will, because if the Nigerian children cannot go to school and they are being forced out of the schools and the education is allowed to collapse in the country, then that means Nigeria will be a country without a future. It is said that the future belongs to the youth. So if the future belongs to the youth, what kind of use are you having for the future? A youth that are not educated. A youth with parents who were educated and grandparents and great grandparents who were educated, but who could not be educated. So where is the future? That means a nation without a future. It's already stifled. It's already dead. Okay? I've been issued. So it's a very great problem. Education is one of the biggest legacies you can leave. Okay? to the children and for the future. So if they are not going to school, it's a terrible, terrible situation that the government in power can see and allow the, 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 the university system and the children, undergraduates, to stay at home for upwards of six months. Six months, half a session, okay? And they are, they are dragged back. It is, it is unfortunate, it is terrible, okay? They are there to find solutions to problems. It's not to find excuses. It's not to be helpless. It's not for their hands to be tied. But to find solutions wherever it lies. There is a solution to every problem. If you are willing to do what is right, you will do it. You will find the solution. And then you move on. That is the way it is. We cannot be in a lock jam and then fold our hands and then pretend uh, play there. Fold ourselves on the cloth and pretend to be to be asleep or, or dead or helpless. It is sad. And then you begin to wonder, uh, do we really have leaders in this country? Do we have a government? Thank you so much uh, for this uh, exciting moment with you, oh, Mr. Austin. It's a pleasure having you. Pleasure. Do have a great day. And to come your way some other time. Remember, bless and thank you. May God bless you.